Hi, Dr. Dave here to explore the amazing world of billiards physics in super slow motion. I will look at 10 categories of high-speed video clips from various sources that are linked in the video description. If you want to learn or see more about a particular topic, visit the links provided. Hitting the cue ball below center imparts bottom spin. Notice how with a straight shot, the cue ball comes to a stop, delivering all of its speed to the object ball before the bottom spin draws the cue ball back. An above center hit imparts top spin. Top spin causes the cue ball to follow forward after hitting the object ball. Again, the cue ball stops in place before the top spin propels it forward. If there happens to be a chalk mark at the contact point between the balls, a follow shot does not work as expected. Cling, also known as kick or skid, causes the cue ball and object ball to hop, and top spin is lost, so the cue ball follows forward much less than expected. Anytime you hit the cue ball too far off center, a miscue results, where the tip fails to grab the cue ball and it slips off. Even though miscues involve a sliding hit and often result in secondary contact with the tip, ferrule, or shaft, a miscue is not considered the double hit foul. Have you ever seen this happen before? Anytime an object ball hits the near cushion going into a corner pocket at fast speed, it rattles out. Here's why. The cushion imparts side spin to the ball, in this case left spin, which causes the ball to rebound more to the left off the far pocket facing, which causes the ball to rattle out. In this example, the ball was actually over the edge of the pocket at one point, but the outward rebound angle created by the spin manages to extract the ball from the pocket. Did you know that any time a ball curves on a pool table, the ball follows a parabolic path? If you have a math and physics background, you can check out the proof in the analysis linked in the video description. Parabolic paths occur with draw or follow shots at an angle. They also occur with Masse shots. Here's a cool infrared slow motion video clip visually showing the path followed by the curving cue ball. Because the ball is sliding as it spins, it creates lots of friction that heats up the cloth. Notice how the circumference of the cue ball also lights up with heat. When the cue ball is driven down into the cloth with a large force and spin like this, the spot on the cloth beneath the ball gets very hot. This friction is what causes the white skid marks you can see on the cloth after shots like this. They don't call them burn marks for nothing. Whenever a ball hits a cushion, it gets driven down into the table, which also causes hot spots and cloth wear. That's why rail grooves develop on a pool table after lots of use. When trying to control cue ball direction off rail cut shots, it is important to understand some basic pool physics. If you hit the cushion first, even with side spin, the cue ball comes off the object ball in the tangent line direction, which is not good here since we need to get up table for the 8. To avoid the obstacle balls, you need to hit the object ball before the cushion, either with outside spin, or with inside spin. Here are some slow motion clips showing the wide range of cue ball control flexibility you have with rail cut shots. Going ball first with outside spin pulls the cue ball back. Going cushion first with any spin results in tangent line motion. And going ball first with inside spin sends the cue ball well forward. Did you see the spin take on the cushion after hitting the object ball? If you use a drag shot where you hit the cue ball below center with side spin, but soft enough for the backspin to wear off on the weight of the object ball, you can send the cue ball significantly forward. Here, the effect is used to get past the 1 for a shot at the 8. Whenever you use side spin, the cue ball does not head in the direction of the cue. For example, look how far I need to aim offline to send the cue ball straight into the pocket. And this is a Predator Revo, a very low cue ball deflection shaft. A solid maple shaft creates much more deflection. 
If you want to learn how to accurately compensate your aim when using side spin with any shaft and for shots of any speeds and distances, see the link in the video description. Now let's look at what causes cue ball deflection, also known as squirt. With an off-center hit, the tip starts to rotate with the cue ball during tip contact. This pushes the end of the shaft sideways. Whenever you push on anything with mass, it pushes back. Isaac Newton said, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. That's why the cue ball does not head straight. For more information, see the link in the video description. Q-tips take an amazing amount of abuse. Look how much a tip deforms with an off-center hit. Also notice the cloud of chalk dust. That's why it's important to vacuum and wipe down the table's cloth periodically. A cue's shaft also experiences large forces that cause it to vibrate in interesting ways, especially with off-center hits. Cushions on the table compress a lot more than you might think. Here's an example where cushion compression can be helpful. Even though the ball is frozen between the cushion and the other ball, it can still be banked into the far corner. Even with the balls at an unfavorable angle like this, the cushion compresses enough to allow the ball to clear. Cushion compression also helps with a shot like this. The object ball compressing the first cushion gives the cue ball time to clear the first potential double kiss. And the cue ball compressing and changing rebound angle off the point of the pocket gives the object ball time to clear the second possible double kiss. Here, cushion compression is used to launch a coin into a glass. Jump shots are easier than you might think. The cue ball actually jumps automatically on any fast speed shot. Here's an example where even with the cue as level as possible, the cue ball still easily hops over a coin with a follow shot. And with the back of the cue elevated more, you get more height. It is easy to jump over the edge of an obstacle ball with only modest cue elevation. And with more elevation, you can easily clear an entire ball. If you want or need jump shot technique advice, see the link in the video description. With a little practice, you can even control the cue ball with jump shots. And you can learn to jump quickly and high when necessary. You can also use a jump shot to land on a ball to create a cut angle that doesn't seem possible. And you can jump off the back of a pocket to avoid a scratch. You can even jump into an object ball to have it clear an entire obstacle ball. A lot can be learned by watching Shane Van Boning break in slow motion, since he is one of the best breakers in the world. If you want to learn why he chokes up on the grip, raises his body, and drops his elbow with shoulder motion, see the link in the video description. This clip shows why the cue ball hops off the rack. Because the cue hits the cue ball at a slight downward angle and with fast speed, the cue ball bounces and is airborne the entire way to the rack. Anytime the cue ball hits the one ball while airborne, after one or more bounces, it will hop in the air. I hope you enjoyed my collection of Billiards Physics slow motion clips. A lot more can be found at the link in the video description. Good luck with your game from Dr. Dave.
Thank you.